I will record our um, discussion for tonight, which is the methods or the chapter two, the components of chapter two that are involved um, in writing, in thesis writing at Mecca Wine College. So before I start, I'd like to request everyone to kindly mute their um, their sound their 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 microphone first, para hindi tayo sabay na nagsasalita. And then later on, I'll give you the chance to talk and to ask questions. For now, uh, just give me the online platform muna. Ako muna magsasalita para matapos natin itong discussion natin. Of course, chapter two in Mekawain College is entitled as methods, no? And um, let us be reminded that under methods, there, there are basic concepts that you need to be reminded of. These are research approach, research method, and research technique. And when we say um, research approach, we are concerned about how data will be treated. So that is the approach. And when you say method, you are concerned about how data will be gathered. And the, and the technique will, will answer the question, what data will be gathered? So when you say methods, which is the, the, the first part of uh, chapter two of Mekawain College, is it is the concise description of the research method and justification for its use. When you say research method or research design, it's either quantitative or qualitative. In your case, majority of you will utilize the quantitative research method and specifically, kung kayo ay gagamit ng IVDB model, then your um, design will be descriptive correlation method. Of course, napakarami pang methodology, but the, one of the most famous methods is uh, descriptive, and under that is descriptive method, a descriptive correlation. There is also a sufficient description or field procedures followed in the collection of data as to when, where, and how data are to be obtained. No? And take note in writing your methods to protect the identity of your respondent institution. Because when you say where, you're talking about the location. So naming or identification <coughs> of the institution or the school where you're going to conduct the study is not acceptable this time because of the issue on, <coughs> sorry, Data Privacy Act. By the way, tomorrow, please uh, do not fail to attend our discussion. I invited a special lecturer in the name of Attorney Frederick Gayla to uh, talk about uh, the Data Privacy Act in research and education. So please attend tomorrow, no? Meron tayong discussion about that. Now, the second part of chapter three, chapter two, I mean, is population and sample. When you say population and sample, population refers to the entire uh, possible number of respondents. And in statistics, that is represented by capital letter N. When you say naman sample, that is the subset of the population and that is represented by small letter N. That's why it's called population and sample. So there should be um, an, uh, the use of appropriate sampling design and sam sample size. When you say design, are you going to use probability or non-probability sampling design? And when you say sample size, there is a specific method in which sample size should be computed, can be derived. The most common method is what you call the Slovin's formula. And Slovin's formula is uh, commonly used if your design is um, quantitative in nature and if you are going to use a large sample, I'm sorry, if, you're going, if you are going to utilize large population. So therefore, you need to compute for a sample size. Kasi syempre, if your target respondents are students, for example, and you have 10,000 students, you cannot get them all. So mag, ano ka lang, mag, sampling, mag sample ka lang, and, and we call it sample size. 
And then I'd, I'd like to um, go back to sampling design. That when I say sampling design, the most commonly used also sampling design is the um, non-probability sampling design, meaning to say that you're giving all the respondents an equal chance to be given, to be part of your uh, research study. Ibig sabihin, hindi ka bias. Nandiyan yung mga random sampling, nandiyan yung mga systematic sampling design. No? On the other hand, yun yung probability. On the other hand, when you say non-probability sampling design, this is used when the population is small. Ibig sabihin, konti lang yung possible mong population, therefore, gagamit ka ng uh, non-probability sampling design. Kaya ang mga ginagamit mo rito, convenient sampling, snowball sampling, quota sampling, kaya lang minsan may bias. Kasi uh, ikaw mismo yung namimili. Samantalang kapag uh, probability sampling design, merong randomization na, na tinatawag. Sabi sabihin, all respondents are given an equal chance to be part of your research study. The next part of uh, the uh, method or chapter two of Mekawine College is instrument of the study. If you attended our discussion about instrumentation, I discussed there the validity and reliability testing or the, the Cronbach's alpha of the instrument. You are reminded that you need to ensure that your instrument is acceptable. When you say acceptable, meaning to say that the instrument is valid and reliable. That is why it is important that you, that you browse the literature, yung EBSCO host, you look for possible instrument that you can use. So yung magpapacheck sa akin sa, ano, sa ngayong 20 and 23, mas maganda kung meron na kayong proposed instrument. So ang hahanapin ko dyan sa chapter 3 ninyo, is the reliability index or the Cronbox Alpha para masabi na reliable ang inyong instrument. No? And of course, if you're going to develop your own, dapat nag-undergo siya ng validity and reliability testing. Merong procedure na ginagamit to subject your instrument to validity and reliability testing. So that is instrument of the study. And then, um, if you remember also last time, part of um, our data, data gathering procedure, pag sinabi natin instrument, gagamitin natin to. This is, a, this is the data gathering tool. Since pandemic, we had, we had a discussion uh, with, the, with Dr. Kino in the group on how to come up with an online, online survey instrument. So kasama sa discussion nyo ng instrument is how are you going to gather data using that instrument? No? And then part also of uh, instrumentation is the detailed procedure on how the instrument was constructed. If you constructed your own. Pero kung nag-adapt ka naman, ang babanggitin nyo lang doon, yung source ng inyong instrument at yung validity ng inyong instrument, yung reliability index. And the last part of, um, of um, chapter two is data processing and statistical treatment. It is important also that you identify specific uh, tools or statistical tools that you're going to use to address each problem. No? And this time, hindi na po tayo mano mano, di ba? Pinag-usapan na natin yon. We are not going to use manual computation anymore. The discussion of Dr. Ray about manual computation is for you to appreciate the, 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 the way statistics is, be, is being computed. Pero now that there is um, SPSS, hindi nyo na kailangan balikan yung manual computation. All you need to do is to identify which statistical tool is appropriate for every problem. So ang rule natin, if your question or your problem is a univariable, pag sinabing uni, one. Variable, yun yung, yung, yung term or topic ninyo, univariable. 
if you're uh, if it is uni univariable, then you're going to use descriptive statistics. Kapag yung question niyo ay naging by variable or multi variable, ibig sabihin by dalawa, multi marami na siya. Hindi hindi na siya descriptive. Gagamitan niyo na siya ng inferential statistics. Okay, if you remember, if you attended the class of Dr. Ray, he made a very good discussion on the different inferential statistics or tools for inferential statistics. So, dito nyo lahat ilalagay yun. At ang importante dito is that you are able to answer all the questions in chapter 1. Meaning to say, all questions, ha, every question has its own corresponding statistical treatment and data processing. Nakuha niyo po ba yun? So I think that would be all for chapter 2 for Make Hawaiian College. And then siguro, uh, pandagdag dito sa, ano, sa instrument of the study, dagdagan nyo na ng discussion ng ethical consideration. Pag sinabi natin ethical consideration, you should be able to ask permission from the, from the respondents and, it, and if possible, there should be an informed consent. Pag sinabing informed consent, pumayag yung uh, respondents na maging part ng study mo. Kasi pag hindi siya pumayag at pinilit mo siya, that's unethical. So by the way, we have a special discussion on that about ethical considerations in writing a research paper. All right? So I guess that would be all for chapter 2. Yun yung mga guides, guidelines ninyo sa pagsusulat ninyo ng chapter 2. Do you have any comments? Any question? Pinahagingan ko na yung chapter 2 kasi para yung mga magsusulat at nagsusulat ay maging guided na. And then syempre, yung example na chapter 2 na Mekawain College ay naka-upload na po sa ating FB page. Pakibrowse na lang po. Tapos i-apply ninyo yung principles na pinag-usapan natin, yung guidelines na pinag-usapan natin on how chapter 2 should be written. Any questions so far? About chapter 2. No questions? Ibig sabihin na intindihan? Yes po, sir. Yes po, sir. No question. Yes po, sir. Ah, galing, galing na mga sadyante ko naman ngayong gabi. Hindi ko alam kung naiintindihan. Ano, nakatulog na yata. Alas 7 na kasi ng gabi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ganun lang yung chapter 2. No? So, first, review natin. Research design. Dapat ma-discuss ninyo. In your case, descriptive correlation. And then, uh, population and sample. O, oh, na-discuss na natin yan. Uh, dapat meron kayong um, uh, sampling design na gagamitin. Either probability or non-probability. And then, dapat may sample size. And do not forget that when you discuss the population and sample, is that you omit or you protect the identity of your respondents. You do not mention any name of school or institutions that you're going to use in your study. Pwede mo sabi na one of the schools in Bulacan, parang ganon. One of the elementary schools in Bulacan that you're going to use, for example, hundred ganyan. Walang name of the school. Even the name of the district. Kasi... Uh, baka ma-data privacy tayo niyan. Lalo kung mga gag na gamit nyo, karamihan ng DV ninyo is ano, academic performance. So yun, dapat maprotektahan natin yung pangalan ng eskwelahan. Kasi pag lumabas sa academic performance na puro mabababa, parang nakakahiya naman na identified yung school na mabababa yung academic performance. Or nakakahiya rin na i-divulge yung teacher's performance ng isang eskwelahan. Kaya dapat, Hindi, ma, ano, hindi mababanggit yung eskwelahan. 
kung gusto niyo pwede niyo gawa ng ano ng code ba school x or school a kung marami kayong school sa gagamitin school a b c d parang ganon ang mahalaga may may data privacy ang ang ano ang population niyo ma-protect dapat yung, yung ano yung date yung information na yon no lalo na kung mga data niyo is academic achievement teachers performance nakita ko rin eh, sa mga IBDP niyo eh mga job satisfaction job commitment baka personally iba doon nakabawa naman ng school pag lumabas na ang baba pala ng job satisfaction nila doon di ba parang pag-uusapan yung eskwelahan all right so meron pa Meron pa kayong tanong? Wala na. Kasi mamaya naman ang gagawin ko pagkatapos natin, babalikan ko yung page natin para doon sa mga umabol sa uploading. Akala ko tapos na kasi ko eh. Na-check. Na ano ko na natapos ko na ng gandulo eh. Tapos siguro na nakita ng iba na merong na merong mga comment naghabol na rin. Pero okay lang. Uh, mamaya, i-kukompletoin ko na lahat yun. Lahat ng in-upload ninyo. So, um, kung nakita ninyo na yung topic ninyo is parang naulit na doon sa mga nauna, mag-browse kayo sa taas. No? Uh, ibig sabihin nun, ay ano, ibig sabihin nun, hindi ko i-approve yun. Kasi parang paulit-ulit na lang sa mga nasa taas, mga nauna na. Pangalawa, When you say topic, I'm not referring to title yet. Wala pang title. Topic pa lang tayo. Kasi yung title, bubuoy natin yan pag nakita tayo rito. Kasi ah, hanapan ko muna ng gap. There should be a gap in the literature. Pag sinabing gap, yun ang pinaka-problem. If you remember how to write introduction, the TIOC approach, the trends, issues, objectives and contribution. Hanapin ko doon yung issues. Kasi kung wala kayong issue or, or contradicting findings na may present, ay hindi natin i-continue paper ninyo. Dapat may issue. When you write a research paper, there should be a problem. And the problem that we are referring to is simple. When you read the literature and their findings are contradicting with one another. Dapat merong contradicting. Pag wala, yun ang una kong babasahin sa chapter 1 ninyo. Pag wala, maghahanap kayo. Kaya ang literature review ay malaking bagay. No? Malaking bagay yun. Kaya yung mga nagpapa-approve ng IBDV, topic lang. And ensure the topics are measurable. Measurable by your five senses. Ano ba yung five senses natin? Anyone? Mag-recitation nga tayo. Five senses natin. Yung mga kasagot, bibigyan ko ng plus one. Sa grade. Ayaw ng plus one. Five senses lang? <laughs> o nahiya lang siguro. Magtatawag ako. Ay, yung pinakamalapit mo na sa akin, Mr. Ronel Sulit. Ikaw ang pinakamalapit sa bahay ko eh. Ano yung five, five senses na sinasabi natin? Sense of? Halila na wala na sila. Sight. Hearing. Oh, sight. Ano pa? Hearing. 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 Smelling. Touch. Smell. Smell. Taste. Ha? Taste. Taste. Oh. Lima yun. Ibig sabihin, ibig, ibig sabihin, when you gather your data, pwedeng yung five senses na yun, pwedeng gamitin. Ang hindi lang pwede, kaya ako pinabanggit yung five senses. Pag naging six sense ang ginamit mo, eh wala tayong ganong research topic na pang six sense. Kayo ba meron kayong six sense? Yung mga tamang-tama, mga gundas, no? Ilan kayang kaluluwa ang bibisita sa inyo dahil bawal pumunta ng sementeryo? <laughs> Bilangin mo na yung mga espiritong ano, maglalakad-lakad sa kwarto mo. 
<laughs> dahil hindi mo sila bibisitahin. Dahil ba, di ba bawal? Bawal daw ang November 1. O dahil hindi niyo sila bibisitahin, kayong bibisitahin. So research topic mo is how many how many of your relatives, yung mga namatay na, ang bumisita sa <laughs> So therefore, pag ganun ang topic mo, six senses, hindi kasama yon. Yun ang point ko, kaya pina-identify ko yung five senses. Yung pang, pang, five, pang five senses lang dapat ang, ano, ang gagamitin. Alright? So yun. Oh, may tanong pa kayo? May third eye. Oh, ako meron akong third eye. Tinatakpan ko lang. Ayan. Nakakover. Kaya hindi ko binubuksan yung third eye ko. Tinakpan ko ng bonnet. <laughs> Para kunwari, opa. Meron pang tanong? Silence means none. O oh, sige. Kung wala ng tanong, may madadagdag pa ba sa magpapacheck sa October 20? Wala rin. Wala na? O kung wala na, i-off ko na recording natin. <laughs> 